Amen, Faith Vision family. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this wonderful Palm Sunday uh, morning service. Uh, before we get into uh, some songs and lifting Jesus up, I'm going to just open up in a word of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for giving us this time and opportunity with our families, Lord God, all around the world to worship and praise you, Lord God, this morning. We ask that you would give us your joy, Lord God. Give us your peace. Give us your comfort, Lord, right where we're at, Father. And Lord God, open our hearts and our minds and our eyes that we would draw closer to you and that you would draw closer to us. We, we, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people said, amen. Can we give God a hand of praise this morning? Amen. Let's continue to worship and give him praise. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Oh, you never change. You never feel 
praise this morning.
for this beautiful day, Lord, that you have given to us, Father God. We thank you for this time of praise and worship with you, Lord Jesus. We just give you glory, honor, and praise for all that you continue to do, even in such a time as this. We thank you for your peace, your love, your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. And we invite our pastor, Reverend Paul Tulua, um, to the pulpit for the word today. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And good morning to Palm Sunday. Everybody, I want to welcome you to our service here in Watts, the Faith Vision International, which used to be the first Tongan Assembly of God. And welcome every from wherever you are. Uh, I welcome you to our tonight, uh, today to our service, to our Palm Sunday service. And may God bless everyone. Let's get into the word. Let me uh, pray and let's go on from here. Father, in Jesus' name I pray, I need your help right now, O oh God, so that I can share the word, hallelujah, so that we know what's going on at that day, very important day, Palm Sunday. Let every, everyone be blessed. And I want to thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Like we said again, I want to say uh, thank you for listening to us if you wherever you are i want you to sit tight get ready to rece receive the word uh today uh, let me read the scripture for us and the scripture that i'm going to take from it is the uh just from that story of the palm sunday out it take it from uh gospel writ written by saint luke in chapter 19, and I read it from a verse, start from verse 28 through uh, 46. Luke 19, we we'll start from verse 28 through 46. And it says, <coughs> After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethset and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olive, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the next village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which, which no one has ever written, and untie it, and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sending ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needed it. They brought it to Jesus, throw their cloaks on the cold, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cold, their cloak on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to Mount, or Mount Ol Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the Lord as the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stone will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over and said, if you, even you, 
had only known on this day what would be would bring you peace but now it is hidden from you your eyes the day will come upon you when you your enemy will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in every side they will task you to the ground you and the chil- in your children within your walls they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's co- um, coming to you verse 45 then he entered the temple area and became to driving out those who were selling it is written he said to them my house will be the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves thank god like i said earlier today is the palm sunday let me mention to you here what why they call it palm sunday and not only that but i want to point out to you today some very interesting point here in the scripture that i have written from so that we are going to take it and learn from it first that i want to say to you uh in the name of jesus as they reproach they are coming close to jerusalem to the city of god jerusalem is the city of david late after the destroy the old jerusalem the holy city but now here is jesus after he travel around uh in those old days in old jerusalem and the cities around them preaching sharing healing the disease rebuking the uh, demons that possess people and then now he is approaching time for christ to be crucified but before that now he's coming to visit jerusalem when he come to jerusalem like the word said approaching from the mount uh, olive he sent two of his disciple <coughs> he told them go down to the next village as you go down you will find a colt it died by the gate and you have to untie it and bring it to me he said to them if anybody asked you why are you untying the colt tell them that the lord need them first thing that i want to mention here to you is very important for us and i believe the scripture that are written here it is not by accident that why christ tell them to go and get the untied cold uh untie him and bring him or loose him bring him to him there's something unique and very important that i want to mention here untie and bring it to me that's a lot of, that's why Christ came to the world he came to undie us the sin and the devil uh, creeps us and hold us we are ready to for the judgment of god because sins are creeps the whole world the bible says for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whosoever believe in if him in him should not perish but have everlasting life so that's mean we all are ready to die in our sins the penalty of the sins of the world is starting because of the first parents disobey god 
From them, the whole world suffer because of that sin. So Christ came to lose us. Christ come to set us free, just like that cold that Christ told his two disciples. Loose them and bring them to me. Uh, every person that has come in, in contact with Christ and accepted Christ to, his, to their lives, he set you free for a reason. He don't just set you free or, or save you and let you go or let us go. He saved you for a purpose. Listen to what he did here. He brought the call to him. And his disciples and the people, they took off their, their cloaks and put on his back. And Jesus rode on it to Jerusalem. You see, that point I want to tell you, every one of, of you that you have received Jesus Christ into your life. You have a purpose. God give you a purpose. You have a, he have a purpose for you. You try to find out. But I want to say to you. Do you know your purpose? Right now. If you don't know your purpose. If you're coming to church. If you don't know. You just save and don't do anything. Don't remember this. God did not save you. To just let you go. He saved anybody. For purpose. That's why they call this gold here. He want to write on it. As a king to Jerusalem. This time. It was prophesied. By. Uh, Zechariah. That one of these days. The king of Israel will. The king of king. Christ is the king. Or the Messiah. Will write on a colt. Now it's happening. It's fulfilled that Christ was riding on the cold to Jerusalem. And when they ride on, they put their, their uh, cloak on the road for Christ to travel on to Jerusalem. And not only that, but the people prayed palm princes and put on the road for him also. So people, that's why they call this day a Palm Sunday. A day they have used the palm branches and put on the road for Christ to travel on to Jerusalem. You see here, cloak, they say the cloak or the coat of the people. And when I look at it, they said the cloak of people can be a different colors. It depends on what the occasion. If it will be something uh, to celebrate something happy, they have a, a bright color they may use. Like red, like a burgundy, like white, something like that. Or if there is a funeral, they wear dark clothes. Because they mourn. But this day is a celebration. This day they are. Uh, they declare to Jerusalem. That their king. Is coming to Jerusalem. They prove it. They prove it. The Bible says. The reason why. They rejoice and they praise God. With a loud voice. <coughs> because they have seen. The miracles that he has done. So they proved this is the Messiah they were waiting for. And that's why they come. They celebrate. And the Bible said as they come down to Jerusalem. The disciples lift their voice. And the people in the crowd will lift their voice to praise God. They were joyfully praise God with a loud voice. With a loud voice. In our churches. Sometimes we have. Uh, we worship God. Sometimes 
When people may say it's too loud. Be quiet. Maybe God is not deaf to hear you people oh, yelling and praising God so loud like that. Here at that Palm Sunday when they uh, proceed down to Jerusalem, people and the disciples of Christ lift up their voice joyfully and praise God so loud. The city was stirred. The city was moved. They, because they hear the crowd and the disciples were praising God so loud as they come down to the temple and into the to Jerusalem. In book of Matthew 21 verse 9, this is what Matthew written. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is why they they cry, they praise God. Because they know this is the son of David. And this is, this is the Lord. This is the king. They shouted Hosanna to the highest is coming there. As they come down close to the city, the Pharisees, that's the only people they don't like them to hear them praise God so loud like that. It's those Pharisees. Pharisees, they tell Jesus, rebuke, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus tell him, if my, if they keep quiet, if my disciples keep quiet, the stone will cry out. Amen. So to us people, we don't have to be quiet when we worship God. We have open our mouth, lift our hand, and we worship God with our voice. Hallelujah. Because if it, 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 if it is in, uh, forbidden, Christ would have to say something to his disciples. But he allowed them to worship God. And to praise him. Just like the Bible says. If you lift me up. I will throw all men unto me. See Jerusalem. When they shout so loud. Right like this. The city stirred. They were moved. They know they heard their song. Some they were not. They don't know. There is the king now. They hear the king is coming. To Jerusalem. Another one when they approached the city and Christ, when he looked at the city, he cried, he wept. Why he wept? It says there in the verse, because they don't know the time of their of their visitation. Christ come to his people. Christ come to the city. The city of God. Jerusalem. The city of God. City. Hallelujah. To his city. And his people don't know he's coming. And his people against him. They don't know the Messiah is coming. As you know. Israelite, the Jews, they don't believe he is the one. He is not the Messiah. Because they expected someone to be born in the house, in the temple, in the house of a king. They thought maybe. That's why they don't believe Christ is. But because he came and born in a manger. It's not right for. It's what they think. They thought. It's why they rejected him. But this is how God is. Brought his son to be born. 
humble himself and be born just like the humble anybody else, any the poor people, and he wept. Let me say this to you. If Christ look from heaven and look and see you, you what do you think Christ will say? Is Christ going to be cry? Is Christ going to be wept when he see you? He saw his people and he saw Jerusalem. They are not ready. Their life are not ready to receive the Messiah. They're living in sin. They are so busy, uh, caught up with things of the world. Just like the rich people, rich young, the fool, the rich fool. He worked, break down the pond and put a new uh, pond because he had too much Stuff to put in, fruit of his farm. He have no time for God. He have no time for the Creator, the one that created him. So it's the same thing with uh, Jerusalem. That's why he wept. He came to his people, and they are not ready to receive him. They are so caught up with their own thing, things of the world. And they don't know the Messiah is coming to visit them. So that's the reason. I hope after this Palm Sunday, I hope you people get ready. Ready because the Bible says, <coughs> I'm coming back to take my people home. Are you ready? You know, there's a funny thing here that I remember. We are in, the, in this troubled time. We are in the time here right now where uh, the uh, coronavirus is here. And you know, the coronavirus is one of the last, one of the most largest uh, Sign for the coming of Christ towards the end. And this is the worst pestilence. See, it's spread all over the world. From China, all this to the, to the east, to Europe. And it come here to America right now. And you see it's, we people are scared and afraid. But he could think about for us Christian. To you that know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it's not the things, it's not for you to scare off. It's a sign for you to get ready. Get ready for his coming. Get your life straight. You, just like the share, the preaching of John the Baptist. You have to, you have to bury the, uh, the whole, the the rough places must be, must be smooth. The hill must be brought down. Uh, the desert, hallelujah. We have to be, the crooked must be straight. So he's talking about our lives. Our life must be straight according to, to, the, to the will of God. Must be brought low. The mountain must be brought low. In our heart is, a lot of mountain, a lot of things is not right in the presence of God. It must be right in order for Christ to be in our, our life. In order for Christ, for, for our life to be ready to take us home. And when he's coming, he wept over Jerusalem. Left Christ, I ask you now, after this time, I can pray with you. We can pray for you after church. And get your life ready. Whenever the time that Christ comes to take us, we are all ready. When he knows, when he's, that's, I believe that's why he's not coming right now. Because he knows 
the whole world maybe they are not ready. They are not ready for him to come. Not only that, but as after Jerusalem, now he's entering the temple. As he entered the temple, he saw what's going on there. This. He rebuked, he saw there is selling going on there. He turned the tables and he cast them out. The, the money changer. They sell doves and things like that in the temple. And he cast them out. The Bible, it's, they said it's a cleansing. They said it's a cleansing of the temple. Christ was rebuking, cast the people out. They said to them, my house should be a house of prayer. But you make it a den of thieves. So to us, I want to say also to us here in this point. Remember, your body and my body as a Christian is the temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians three sixteen says, "Don't you know that you yourself are the temples of God, and God's Spirit lives in you." If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred, and you are the temple. Christ is coming to Jerusalem to the physical uh, temple. But this is what Paul said. That's why we invited Christ. As Christians, we invited Christ to live in us, to, in our heart. When Christ lives in there, he don't live, he don't come to live in a filthy, dirty house. It is common sense, same as you and me. Our body as a Christian, when we invited Christ, He's coming to a nice house, clean temple. And that's why it says here, our house, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be dirty when we do something to it. Just like when we eat things, we put things to our body and it's, we destroy it, like we, alcohol, smoking, and stuff like that. It can be destroyed. That's why it causes a lot of disease to our body because of that. We are not careful of it. But people, remember, that's why Christ, when he came there, he cleansed the temple in Jerusalem. To us, Christian, as a uh, temple of the Holy Spirit, well, we must keep it clean. At the first time when we invited Jesus, we asked him, cleanse me of my sins. When Christ cleanses us and forgives us, we are clean. And then when Christ comes and lives in our heart forever. And that's why we are Christian. Now, because our temple, he, our, our self is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My friend, people today, we are coming to celebrate the Palm Sunday. And then I, I share with you the day that Christ journey as a king, the people declare at that day as they cry, is a king of the Jews to Jerusalem. And when he came, he wrote on a donkey that was untied. Hallelujah. People, God will use people that are already loose from the power of Satan. And then they proceed down when people come to contact with Christ and they love Christ. 
They are very important. Their trace have become nothing number two when they comparable with Christ. They put their cloak on the road for Christ to ride on to Jerusalem. Just like my friend, hallelujah, the woman that came with his bottle of alabaster, alabaster oil. When he came with it to Christ, he prayed it. People say he prayed it in this expensive oil. He wasted. But you know what? This is why. People, when they come to contact with Christ and they know he is worthy of it. Treasure. Much showed up to the king. See, the, a wise man brought those coal because he's a king. That's why these people here put this thing on the road. They declare this is king. Remind us our culture in Tonga. When our king traveled from place, people put their tapa on the road for him to travel. Because why? He is the king. People, they do something here because he is the king. Thank God when he arrived, one good point that I want to say here, the reason why Christ wept when he sees Jerusalem because they are not ready. Let me ask you people, you must be ready tonight. You must ask Christ to come into your life. Get your life ready by coming to the Lord. Ask him, help you to cleanse and not only that, but he cleansed the temple. Let Christ, it's the only way to cleanse you, the temple of God. Let Christ forgive your sins and here to allow him to come to your life. He's your Lord and Savior. Before I close today in the service, at the time that we are living, time to us here, the time of uncertainty, time of trouble because of this uh, coronavirus. I ask you, invite Jesus Christ. The answer for this time to America, to your life, is inviting Jesus Christ to your life. As, as Christ went with his disciple on the boat, while they on the on the sea, the wave and the wind was raging. When they wake Christ up, they are afraid to be. They thought they are going to die. And Christ woke up and rebuked the storm, the wind, and he, they were calm. See. That's a blessing of that day to them. That's because they have Christ in their boat with them. They were saved. They were not drowned. That's my message to you, friends, today in a time of uncertainty of the coronavirus. You're afraid maybe your family you are going to die. But let me tell you, if you invited Christ, if you take Christ into your life, the time of this trouble he will come and he will save you from it just like he calmed the sea for his disciples father in Jesus name I want to thank you for the time thank you for the people that listen I believe they received the word tonight they received the word today oh God in the Palm Sunday, let it be a day for them to come to you, just like the invitation. To come to you, O oh God. That's the only answer for the worry of life, for the uncertainty that we are in, is to have Jesus Christ in our life. He's the one that will protect us. He's the one 
it will calm the sea, the troubled sea that we are in now. And I want to thank you. Bless the people and listen to the word. I want to give you praise. I want to give you honor. In that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're here uh, today, in this Palm Sunday, and you people have a request, you can send that request, and we are going to pray for you. Whatever the need may be, we're going to pray for you. And I hope you listen tonight. But tonight, I, we want to pray for you. To pray for you tonight if you want your life to be ready. And not only that, but like the word that I said last. The answer for the uncertainty of the day. The coronavirus, the people are afraid. We are afraid of. You have to invited Jesus into your life. Be your Lord and Savior. He's the one that will save you from all this. Remember, coming of the Lord is nigh. It proves by this pestilence. Because uh, pestilence, famine and pestilence is one of those signs that Christ come near, is near. And I ask you in the name of Jesus, let's get ready. Let me pray for you. We invite you, invite Jesus to your life. If you want, just wherever you are, be quiet or you open your eyes, but pray with me. These short, brief words. And you know after that you know that you invited Christ into your life. Your Lord and Savior. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, forgive me of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, come into my life. As my Lord and Savior. I want to thank you, Lord, for hearing me. I want to thank you, Lord, for making me your son. Make me your servant, O oh God. Use me. And I want to thank you for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray tonight. I heard we know that from the word that you wept, you cry when you saw Jerusalem. Because they are not ready. I ask if anybody tonight, today, Lord God, in this Palm Sunday, <coughs> then he is not ready. If you come tonight or come today, he knows, he no, he's not sure. I ask you, Father, let them have this prayer together with me. But if you're here tonight, let's pray with me if you want to get ready. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for those they think they are not ready because of there is something in their life and there are sins in their life. Cleanse them tonight, O oh God. Cleanse him tonight. Just like when you cleanse the temple. Cast out the demon. Cast out those sins from their life. Forgive them from their sins. Make them clean, Lord. And I want to thank you, Father, tonight. Bless them. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the word today. Thank you for being here with us on this Palm Sunday. That God bless you. God heals you. Ah, in Jesus' name. Now, the second part, we are going to take communion. Uh, as you have your communion with you, uh, we're going to pray. Christ said to his disciples, uh, you do this every time that you meet together. So in this first Sunday, in this Palm Sunday, we are going to take communion. And here, I have my bread and grape juice. I'm going to pray over it. And we are going to take it together. 
Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. I pray that you bless this cup and bless this bread. And as we partake, O oh God, let us know if there is something in our lives, if there is sins, Lord, wash it away. If there is sickness in our body, heal that as we drink, as we receive it, the cup and the bread, because it represents the body and the precious blood of Jesus. Bible says there is power in the blood. The bread is a food to us. It's a meat to us. And I want to thank you, Father. Strength our soul, our body. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that are ready for it, Lord. Let them search their heart, their mind, before we eat, O oh God. Because you said in your word, we don't eat it. We've not prepared our heart. We have to be careful. Father, in Jesus' name, let us search our heart and ask you if there is something in our heart, Lord, that's not right. Make it right with you before we take part. So the communion will be a blessing to their life not a curse to them. Father, I want to thank you in Jesus' name. Now, I have the cup with me. Hopefully you have your cup with you. This is the blood of Jesus. It represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary for you. This is the blood that was away the sins of the world if we accepted him. Please take the cup and drink it in the name of Jesus. That's the blood. I get the bread right now. Hope you have your bread. It represents the body. The body of Christ. The body that the Bible said, his stripe, that we were healed. Take it, if you take it carefully and believe the power in the blood and in the body of Christ that heals us from our wound, from our disease. That's how powerful it is, the body of Jesus. He was wounded for our transgression. Take it. After receiving it, from your own prayer, you say, you say your own prayer of thanks, thanksgiving to the Lord. As I pray. Father in Jesus name. I want to thank you. I want to thank you Lord. I pray a blessing upon everyone. That participate oh God. In this communion. Let today a different day. A great day for their life. A day. That the spirit of God. Will be with them. And bless them. Let the. Communion be a blessing to their lives and their spirit today. I want to thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much. That's the conclusion of our service today. Father, in Jesus' name, we commit this service to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. And everybody say amen. Amen.
Amen, church, to see it out. Oh, the blood of Jesus.
to you Yes, we give it all to you, Jesus God, a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Thank you once again for worshiping with us this morning. If you have any prayer requests, please comment below. We would love to pray with you, speak with you, and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. If you'd like information on giving to the ministry, feel free to inbox us on Facebook or YouTube or email us at faithvisionintl at gmail. Dot com. That's faithvisionintl at gmail.com. Join us next week for our Easter services on Friday night at 7 p.m. Good Friday service and our Sunday morning services at 10.30 a.m. May God bless you, keep you, and guide you in your life. We'll see you next week. God bless.